Kimber today. No. Yeah, no. let's go for a walk. You know, I haven't got Kimber today. No Kimber. No Kimber. So let's close the car and we'll lock it up for you. You got my jacket, Mark. How are you? Oh, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Hello. Can I have a kiss? I'm probably going to say what lots of people who ended up in this rare dementia journey are going to say. Um, the first signs were me questioning myself, which is I was uh, mid 40s and I had a husband who was five years older, just turning 50, and things were just not quite right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. But I started looking inwards to myself, thinking, have I really changed that much? What's happening? Is it too good to be true? I want this so much, but don't know if I can trust you. My mind's racing fast, trying to find the red flags I'm used to. All these green lights are they coming too soon? Cut between red and the green, and you. I'm stuck in the, 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 the big red flag for me was I was rolling pastry one day in the kitchen and I had flour all over my hands and I had the rolling pin and I with my elbow I'd said to him could you get the rolling pin out of the drawer it's a it, it's in that drawer and uh, I signed for him with my elbow and he opened the drawer and duly closed it again and the rolling pin was right in the middle of the drawer and I said there it is can you just pass me the rolling pin and he looked at me with a very blank look and I we did, went through it again and eventually being highly frustrated, I opened the drawer with my flowery hand and got the rolling pin and said, here it is. I sort of felt like knocking him with it, thinking this is a rolling pin. And then thinking, how come he didn't know what a rolling pin was? And as I rolled the pastry out, that was a real, it, it stopped me totally dead in my tracks. In hindsight, now that I know more about frontotemporal dementia and I've had the support, particularly from London, which is where the expertise is, I have found that um, insight and awareness is something that doesn't affect everybody with these rare dementias, but it does affect some of them. Emily's up here singing. We kept him stimulated and we kept him looking and uh, understanding. And the fact that now in the care home he hasn't got that so much, he's definitely deteriorated. And part of me wanting to go in and showing him photographs on the phone is for recognition for the children. Who's this? you try and say to people, I'm really sorry, he's not very well, he's got dementia. But of course they look and their typical view of someone with dementia is somebody older who's got Alzheimer's. And he's so not that. At the moment, there's very little hope. There's no treatment. It's degenerative, it's progressive, and there is absolutely no dignity in the final stages. The support that I've seeked out and I've had to seek it um, has been phenomenal uh, when it's been there and it's been very, very specialist. And I have to say, I hold on to it like gold dust. We just need more of it because it's, it's, there aren't enough people supporting the amount of people that are in this country. It's quite hard to open yourself up to somebody you've never met before and start talking about quite big issues that you might be having or anxieties or concerns. The support that I've had through London on that with the children has been huge. The fact that they are dealing with a bereavement, that they are grieving. And this is not a one event. This is going to be multiple events. Um, and I've really needed that support to try and be the supporting mother that I'm trying to, to be all the time. I'm 